Don't know why it has a C-clamp on it. This is most of the stuff that came off the truck. All right, folks, the time has come to do something about this. Uh, yeah. Wonder how long it's been since that worked the right way. Using my powers of cheapness, just missing almost the entire tooth here. I think we might have found the problem. And I think what happened, well I have no idea what happened. Howdy folks, welcome back. Last fall, I did a series of videos about a white Ford F700 truck. It looked pretty similar to this one. We did the exhaust manifold leaks, we fixed up the wiring for all the lights, and we did a bunch of engine tuning stuff, vacuum leaks, emissions and EVAP type stuff. And as far as I know, it's still running good. And the customer must have been somewhat happy because he brought me another one. This is a 1993 Ford F700. This one's a diesel. It's got the 12 valve 59 Cummins. And there's a few problems. Well, let's take a tour and we'll go through the list. The guy who owns this truck has a tree trimming business. So this is a chipper truck. This is actually like a passenger compartment here. There's some seats inside. And then on the back is a bunk for the chips. They pull a chipper around with it and then it spits out into this bunk here that, that dumps to dump the chips out. Pretty similar to the last one we worked on, but it's like completely opposite as far as how it's set up. So the other one had a 427 gas engine. This has the 59 Cummins diesel engine. The other truck was air brakes. This truck has this god awful Lucas Girling hydraulic brake system. So, yeah, this is an absolute nightmare. It's kind of like a HydroBoost brake system, but it actually has two power steering pumps. So there's a power steering pump down here for the actual steering, and then a second one up here for the brake system. And then it's got the master cylinder, and this second valve over here is a hydraulic parking valve. And the Lucas Girling system actually has hydraulic spring brake chambers for the brakes. So he towed the truck here, it wouldn't stay running, and even if it did stay running, it leaks so much coolant that it would probably overheat pretty quickly. I think the water pump is bad. That's been blowing coolant all over under the hood. Like I said, I'm pretty sure the water pump is out. And then the heater core has been disconnected and bypassed, but it still has the lines for the bunk heater. So I don't know if this heater core is bad or if they just didn't need it or what the what the story is there. And there's some major wiring issues going on. This is uh, obviously bad. Come on. See it melted right through the insulation. He actually cut that wire because it was arcing out. You can see more of it right there. I don't know what that's for. It's some kind of add-on accessory. This truck came from the Carolinas, so it's not really that rusty, but there's no block heater, and if it has a grid heater, the grid heater doesn't work. So it's about impossible to get it started in the winter. I don't know if any of the lights work. Two out of three mirrors on the driver's side are broken, so we'll have to fix that. That would be a pretty quick out of service, if anybody saw that. The interior is pretty rough. The chassis is not rusty, but the floor, somebody's patched the floor. Yeah, the pedals are all, <laughs> are all jacked up. And then the electrical, that's the fuse box just kind of hanging out there. I think it's a five speed with a two speed rear axle. The two speed axle doesn't work. And the third gear in this transmission sounds like a coffee grinder. The clutch also slips pretty badly, even without a load. So we're going to try to adjust that first, but 
I don't know if we'll have have success. There's our block heater, a couple of filters, some coolant, of course. There's one of the hydraulic parking brake chambers on this Lucas Girling system. So that one's been caged, I think. And this one over here is missing entirely. So the truck currently has no parking brake at all. That's the electric motor there for the two-speed axle. Don't know why it has a C-clamp on it. Don't know what's going on with the wiring. I think it's actually disconnected. Yeah, so it's not even hooked up. I guess we can try to clip that back in. Uh, I think the latches or the clippy thing here is broken. Well, it's also missing a battery. Should have two. And then I see the robins have been busy building on top of this one. The cables are there. I think we just need to find another battery and then get rid of the squatters. Yeah, this is the bunk. It's got to be a fun place to ride, huh? Jeez, no thanks. I don't know what he's going to do with this. That's, I mean, this is set up for like a, a tree trimming crew that goes out for, you know, on long trips. And he's just working locally, so probably won't get used. Or maybe he'll store his equipment in there. Well, we got to start somewhere. I'm going to test this heater core. I figure we get the engine stuff kind of taken care of first because probably the most valuable part of this truck is this 5.9 Cummins engine. So the best way I've found to test heater cores is to vacuum test them. So I just got one side plugged off with the appropriate plug. Happens to look like a spark plug. And then on the opposite side, we're going to jam this guy in. It just happens to look like a, a spark plug boot. But it's definitely a for real heater core test tool. And it's not looking good. <laughs> you just can't make this stuff up. This vertical shaft here is for the blend door, runs all the way through the heater box and comes out here on the bottom. Somebody hooked up this fused quick disconnect wire to it. Like why? What in the world are they doing? That's like a bullet connector. And they put it right over the shaft of the blend door. Anyway, the heater core is bad. Let's get it out of there. It's not too bad of a job. Don't tell me there's nuts on the inside. That would be the Ford thing to do, wouldn't it? Anyway, this whole heater box thing has got to come off the firewall in order to get that heater core out. Alright, inside you got to remove this glove box, which I think normally there's a lid and some screws that hold that in, but on this one, those are optional. So we'll get that out of our way. So if this was a gas truck, there'd be a big bracket here that holds the computer, but we don't have anything like that. Well, let's see, those are probably smaller, aren't they? 10 millimeter. Artifacts. Does it work? Almost. Just needs a refill. They always want some little screws. Come on, stay up there.
<laughs> there we go. She's a little crusty. I've done a bit of hoovering inside the air box and inside. Whoa, whoa. Easy now. Easy. Stay. Anyway, clean that up. Uh, inside the firewall, cleaned out those passages. I think I found six pens, one lighter, a couple of nails, a couple of screws. So, pretty much a jackpot, gold mine kind of a deal. Anyway, did I mention that the blower motor is also bad? Uh, you can see the, the squirrel cage fan here is broken. Uh, let me demonstrate. Yeah, so it does run. Sounds like a dying seal. The bearings are shot, and the resistor is also bad. It only runs on high, so. Well, we got a water pump, so we might as well put that on real quick. As I drop my tools. Well, some of these don't sound too good. But it's been sitting a while, so let's not get too excited. I see it's missing a bolt out of the alternator bracket. That's cute. Anyway, water pump's right there. Pretty easy job. Catch pans in place. Here we go. Stay. Torque to factory specs. Oh, come on. If I could just see that thing, it'd be a lot easier. There it is. I don't know, torque specs probably like 24 foot pounds or something like that. That'll do. I guess we better put a bolt in this alternator. Feels like it might be stripped out. Yeah, it's definitely stripped. Alright, we can fix that. Don't turn the bolt, turn the nut. The comment section will go bananas. Fix. I think that'll do it.
about the easiest water pump there is. Do, do, do. All right, we're gonna install a block heater. Maybe it's gonna go in one of the freeze plugs. We gotta get this big air intake snorkel out of the way. I don't want you to come off there. There you go. What's that about? Must be lost. All right, the block heater we're gonna install replaces one of these core plugs. It says you can use any one on the right side of the engine. Just don't get too close to the turbo. So the middle would be best probably, but I like this one right behind the oil filter pedestal. So let's go for it. These can be kind of fun to get out. So we'll try, we'll try prying it out. If that doesn't work, we'll get the slide hammer. That's okay, we'll fish it out. Come on, little guy. There it is. Well, this is the block heater right here. So as we're supposed to install it with the element pointing down, and then we hook one, hook one side of this little T through, and then the other side, and then should be able to pop that guy in. So, it says 10 foot-pounds. Seems like plenty. That'll work. A little bit of dielectric grease on the cord, just to make sure that no electricity flows through those terminals. That's it. Okay, here's our replacement heater core. It comes with a little bit of foam, but nothing like what the old heater core had. So we're gonna recycle some of the pieces. Got this bottom, kind of bottom thing, and this top piece. And then I clipped off this part here that goes over the little, whatever these things are, the little, come on Wes, words. What are those? Barbs. There we go. So we'll just tweak that around. Around there like so. Perfect. Now this is kind of kind of a swiveling design. Most of these aftermarket heater cores are like this. They're sort of universal, so they make a heater core and then they just crimp in different elbows or barbs or whatever you want to call them. Don't be like that. All right, have it your way. Peel that off. We'll peel 
Get that off. think we got kind of a big gap here next to the blend door will that matter yes well will it I don't know Might actually seal up. It's too bad the mice chewed all the foam off the bottom. Whoa, baby. Speaking of whoa, baby. What's up? Hold on, look at this camera. Hey, now you're kind of in focus. What's up? What lies are you telling YouTube today? No lies. Um, I'm gonna go get the kiddo. When I come back, I need to adjust these shelves using a saw. So can you get a saw ready for me, please? Which direction? The long way or the short way? Uh, yeah, we can do that. Okay. Okay, got that installed, obviously. Gotta figure out the heater hoses. So, yeah. It's got two hoses that go back underneath the cab. I'm assuming that's for the bunk heater, but I can't find any sign of a heater inside that bunk. Well, sure enough, see a couple of holes there in the floor of the bunk. That's probably where the heater was. And then there's the hoses. They just looped it back on itself. So I think I'll go ahead and pull the hoses clear out. We'll just get rid of them. Here we go. Hose cam. Come on, baby. Oh, come on, really? There we go. This is good content right here. Good content. <laughs> the best content on YouTube. Well, originally this must've been set up in series. So it would've come out of the thermostat housing through this heater core from the outlet underneath the cab to the bunk heater. And then from that outlet back down to the lower radiator hose. Anyway, the hoses that are left over sticking out of the engine are too short. So rather than have these junctions with two short pieces of hose, we'll just get rid of these. And we'll eliminate the junction and we'll repurpose the hoses that went back to the back bunk and just make some new longer hoses to come from the engine to this one heater core. And that'll be better for everybody involved, I think. These hoses are dirty, but there's nothing wrong with them. At least nothing I can see. We got a blower motor. And the wheel. Like 
so. Now this is not the right blower motor. So this is what came out of it. This is also not the right blower motor. This is the blower motor for the pickup truck and these medium duty, heavy duty trucks use a different blower motor, but you can't get it. At least as far as I can tell, it's not available. So they've already drilled the holes to make this one fit. We're gonna do the same thing. Here we go. I had to drill one extra hole and then down here in this corner, it's gonna end up just being a notch, which is not ideal. But what are you going to do? Can't get parts. Can't get parts. So we're going to make it work. Well, they had a zip tie around this guy before. I think we'll have to do the same thing. It doesn't quite want to stay on there. So it just provides positive air to the brushes or to the motor itself. Anyway, I think it'll work. Let's see if this will plug into this thing. Yes, it does. All right, I'm okay with that. I don't know what the original blower motor looked like. I assume it was a little bit bigger and it probably had a, a larger wheel because I had to move the wheel all the way out in order to get close to the back side of the heater box but it'll be a lot better than the, the dying sea lion. That'll work. I'm still short the blower motor resistor, so we'll have to wait on that. The resistor, it has this style of connector. It only has three pins. This is what I got to replace it. That's the more, I guess, modern style. So the pickup trucks use this, this style resistor. It has four connections. Then I dug down and I found this guy, which is for like a 1986 and older pickup truck. So it has the same connection here. You don't use this fourth pin, which isn't a problem. And this works, but it's actually a little bit bigger. The card is, is a little bit bigger. And then the resistor pack itself is a little bit wider and it won't quite fit in the hole in the heater box. So I don't know what we want to do. This one, this one will fit, but the holes are in the wrong spot. And we'll have to use this pigtail. So yeah, what do we do How about that? A little bit of snipping. And away we go. Beautiful. Just like factory. Except for the extra holes. And cuts. And zip ties. She's not moving. Guess we'll fix that next. All right, folks, this is the blend door cable. This is the rest of the blend door cable. So, yeah, it's not gonna work that way. And she's pretty stiff. Which is why it broke. So we need a solution. This is not available. It's unobtainable as far as I can tell. Even the ones I could find that were for like old Mustangs and pickup trucks and stuff, they're slightly different. They don't have the right ends on them or they don't have this goofy, you know, grommet that goes through the firewall. So we're gonna roll our own. Thanks to our friends at Dorman. Huh? Huh? Not bad. All right, the fish tape was a waste of time.
Beautiful. This is the HVAC control unit. There's the other end of that cable that we just made. So this is all good. Unfortunately, we've opened up Pandora's box here. This. This. Wiring disaster. We've got bare wires here. Some kind of a fuse holder, inline fuse holder. There's the antenna wire. Another inline fuse holder. Tape, bare wires, wire nuts. It had this mouse chewed speaker jammed up inside here. There's no way that works. Some kind of an aftermarket radio. I'm going to assume that also doesn't work. Even though it says QC past 2. And then the back side of this panel, it has a bunch of wires for dummy lights. But I cannot find a connector where that plugs in, so I don't know if they're not used in this application or what the deal is with that. So, yeah. I think what I'm going to do is just put these HVAC controls back together. We'll leave this radio sitting on the dash and he can do whatever he wants to with it. Because I don't want to get involved in that.